أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين إن الحمد لله والشكر لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا دائما مباركا فيه من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبد ورسول عليه الصلاة والسلام What praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek his help and his assistance and <coughs> who, um, who, uh, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide him he will never be misguided and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will misguide him he will ne never be guided <coughs> bear witness there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wahdahu la sharika la wa anna muhammadan abdu rasul alayhi salatu wa salam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah. I see nothing except to MashaAllah such a, a good brothers who would sacrifice their comfort and they are here in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll start with making a special dua for all of you as well as all the Muslims, inshaAllah, to give you the happiness. And inshaAllah, bi iznillah will be granted the heavens this life and the life after and the Jannah Ameen Ya Rabbi Today I want to talk about uh, uh, I want to be specific as much as I can with one subject called al sakina mm -hmm. which is the inner peace Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran al Kareem in Surah Al-Fatih هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم mm -hmm. سبحان الله uh, Allah, see, remember that, uh, the, the meaning of it uh, briefly is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one, He is the only one, He controls the issue, of course many things, but I'm concentrating only about the issue of inner peace, He is the one who controls that, it only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, yeah. so in order to achieve that, we have to have what you call a strong iman, you know, what do you mean a strong iman, it has to be come from your heart and it has to be continuous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He creates us, He creates us with, uh, we're going to face problems, we're going, Iman will go up and down, as well as we're not going to be happy all the time, we're going to face problems, and that is a fact. So going back to the issue of inner peace, it has to start from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have a good connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and always think about it. When we want to define the inner peace, it's the things which she will feel good about it almost all the time. Especially when you have problems, especially when someone bothers you, especially when you face problems with anyone, either the wife or at work or any place. Once you have that, you practice and get used to it as what you call the inner peace, subhanAllah, you will have such a beautiful and stable life. Remember what happened to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu al salam when he immigrated and again it's something I'm sure we heard about it but we have to remind ourselves when he immigrated with Abu Bakr an, from Mecca to Medina and we saw the, 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 the non-believers, the mushrikeen, the kafir would try to uh, kill them, you know. And Abu Bakr said to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu al I could see them, they, they're just like almost a few inches away. Yeah. But he, Prophet Muhammad asked him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him tzakeen in his heart. And he said what? La tahzan inna Allah ma'ana. He had the sakin in his heart, subhanAllah. Allah. Something for us to remember. Now, let me tell you a true story about one of the most successful designer in the world in the history of building uh, Istanbul Bridge, which 300,000 cars go through the bridge. <clears throat> one of the designer, which is very famous, very successful, worked real hard to achieve the mission of making this project successful. It's done. How many, many cars? 300,000 300, cars every day. Ooh. It's one of the oh, most wow. famous uh, bridge in the world. After they finished the project successfully, this particular engineer, and it's in the history, he jumped from the bridge, committed suicide, killed himself. Yeah. And they were wonder. He worked hard, he achieved almost one of the things which is hard to achieve, which making this bridge successful, it's done. It's completed now they're supposed to celebrate that so they went to the hotel where he used to stay and they looked find out what's the reason he wrote a piece of paper said i achieved everything in life i enjoyed everything you cannot imagine i could not found this inner peace i want to test the death and see what it is 
So that's what happened. I was thinking I was, I was trying to make sure that the bridge is strong or not. <laughs> that's why he jumped. That's why. Well, that, that, we had we had that in Egypt it happened also. It happened in Egypt. Yes, right? one one of the one of the most famous bridges okay, okay, between Zamalek and Bula. Okay, ah, ah. that was very famous. Okay, right. and was serving so many cars back and forth. What is the name of the bridge? Uh, كوبري أبو العيلة. كوبري أبو العيلة. Yes. اللي حبيبه كان مبنى على بعض. Yeah. عبد الحليم هو. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, the guy after he designed it was very unique design. Yeah. Okay, and he. Tried to open the bridge so that uh, ships can move yes. with that. Yes. Couldn't open it. Oh. Oh. He got disappointed and he killed himself. Subhanallah. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's all boiled down, comes from Iman. Do you know what is the main reason people, the, the new, I would call it, it's not to convert, people go back to Islam or the non believers is going to, or, uh, you know, uh, enter sure. Islam? The main reason is that inner peace. They cannot find it anywhere. That's good. And uh, one of the guys I met personally, his name is George from Texas. He went to one of the best schools, Stanford University, and he studied all the religions. He had a PhD in that. You could imagine. There is nothing more he could ask as far as religion. Compared to religion, yeah. Subhanallah. And Masha. alhamdulillah, he entered Muslim. Uh, he became a Muslim and he became a leader, actually, and started to spread the word of Islam. He died uh, last week. One of the guys also is an example uh, in Germany for some reason. It all comes from the media, unfortunately, with the bad most Muslims and Islam as well. However, <coughs> people know now there is a difference between Muslims and Islam. Some of the Muslims don't really act right and give an actually worse picture about or the image about Islam versus the true. That's why people who study Islams, I'm talking about the non-Muslims, they will find the fact. One of the guys who start organization in Germany, the purpose for that is to fight the Muslims and Islam and spread. I said, I'm going to show the whole world the truth about Islam. Islam is not a religion, it's a faith. And he was the leader and he started really spreading the issue, started going to the media and start talking about Muslims and Islam, how bad it is. People said, well, show us the fact, show us, you know, where you get this information. He start study from the Quran and end up to be a Muslim, a leader of Muslims, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the one who uh, made the bad movies about Prophet Muhammad Ali, salatu mm -hmm. And he turned out to Islam and he met Hish, and now he said, it's about time for me to make a movie about this great Prophet Muhammad Ali, salatu yes. Now, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the most gift, the, the, the best ever we could achieve is, is, is Islam, of course. We have to, of course, practice that. We have to be happy. People lose almost all their saving lives and all the positions for the sake of finding that, which we have already, is being Muslims, is achieve the inner peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that's where the happiness is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Surah Al-Shurah, ألم نشرح لك صدرك ودعنا عنك وذرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا ذكرك ذكرك فإن مع العصر يسرى remember that إن مع العصر يسرى there is always when things get difficult it says twice you know things will come better we have to have the confidence we have to know that is a fact سبحان الله so I hope and I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى Christian Muslims and the money cannot bring inner peace like tranquility to them. No, absolutely not. What about position? What about? In fact, if you have lots of money, you can sleep. People thinking, what you gonna be doing? You lose your. That's a good point. Really, you know, it doesn't mean that it's. But Allah, I love the subject so much because the Quran talks about the inner peace or the or the tranquility. يعني Always, when I come to the masjid, I said, this is peace of mind, peace of heart. When I come to the masjid, all the time. Why? Wallahi, sakina. Sakina from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Exactly. Illa sakina. Allah shower us with sakina when we come to the masjid. Fasarah, this subject is a beautiful subject. Alhamdulillah. So, Gami'an, inshaAllah.
لانه ميسي شايف انا شايف سكينه فوق ابو احمد رجع فوق ابو احمد لا لا سكينه لا سكينه سكينه بس سكينه سكينه من زنايف لا لا سكينه بس سكينه 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 ذا انر بيست ذاتس ذا اونلي ثينج يو كود هاف وين لايف جيتس ديفيكولت ذاتس سمثينج ويل بي ويز يو اتس لايك ا ويل لايك اكزامبل هو الرسول الله وان سيتنج ان ذا كيف اوف كيف اوف ثور وين هو ميجريتنج ويز ابو بكر هي سيد ابو بكر سيد يا رسول الله اف اني وان اوف ذيم ويل لوك اندر هيز فوت هو هو الفايند اس رسول الله سامي سيد نو 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 العين ترى العين واسعة والحدقة لا ترى سيد their eyes like this but they cannot see us لا تحزن إن الله معنا what this you know سبحان الله is the worst ever that's what you think about it you know is is going to die you know that's the end of it but not not really the end of it that's something we're looking forward not to looking forward to die but looking forward to meet Allah سبحانه وتعالى So we have to have that peace and we have to have the confidence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, I hope inshallah, will grant us the heaven. Yani Allah said, Mishmahandis, yani he said, I shall test you with little bit of I'll be able to give you something from the fear and the pain 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 and the pain. I will, I shall test you with what? Little bit of hunger, loss of fruits, loss of money, loss of life, the river. And subhanallah, he said, give glad tidings to those who are patient. During this calamities or hard time or hardship, how can we, we, we bring this sakina during that time to, to, to expect the worst? What can happen here? Yeah? I lose somebody, I lose, I lose money, I lose whatever in my life. Life is ups and downs, you know? Right. How can we bring this sakina during that time? This is a very important point, Allah. Yeah. You know, peace, it, uh, uh, subhanallah. So sometimes these things disturbing you and it makes you nervous. But if you have that sakina and that inner peace inside, mm -hmm. right. um, I think it uh, no can be different. Exactly. Nobody could bother you, nobody could just, hurt you. You just only, you know, like Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu mm -hmm. and also whenever he has any problem or calamity or anything, he say, he thanks God because it, he says it could be worse. Yes. Okay. It, could be worse. it could be worse. Exactly. It could be worse. Right. Anything that happened to you, Although it's really grieving you and sad about it, okay, but think about it, it could be much, much worse than that. So that makes you... Exactly. Rejah Faqir. Huh? Rejah Faqir. Faqir. Masha Allah. 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 If you have a good faith or good iman, what will happen, supposed to happen, it's written already. <coughs> if you have a trust in Allah, the, the things already written in the Luh al-Mahfuz, whatever, whatever you have in your heart, this is what is the, 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 the core of it. So yeah. whatever happening, whatever supposed to happen, it will happen. Why should we make an effort to change it? Because it's not going to be changed. It's already there, you know. Just go with it and have sakina. Subhanallah. And always, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said in the Quran, "Kim tusurti kafir bil, wala taqulan al shayin inni faalun dalak hada illa inshaAllah." But always say inshaAllah. Let me tell you a story about this man who is a son who is have a bike. And he told his father, I'm going to sell a bike, a market there, I want to sell it, make some money. To sell a bike? A bike, like, uh, like a yeah. motorcycle. Basically. Okay, okay. And his father told him, say, inshallah. I said, why? He said, inshallah, you know, I have the bike, here is the market. How much so I should get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> similar, similar no, to I, that. Said <laughs> so the, the, the uncle, the market, the money in my bucket. <laughs> why you have to say, inshallah? <laughs> So it's, a, have it. it's a similar story. So he went and there. I like to do the donkey. <laughs> but the thief came and they took the money. And they said, What is the money? He said, Inshallah. It's like a similar situation, but I heard it yesterday. <laughs> so he went to the market to have the bike and he said, We was waiting for people to um, offer money. So someone came, he was waiting for a long time. And uh, he told him the price. The guy, okay, it looks good. I want to try it. So. He took the bike, he tried it, and he never came back again. Oh. And he was wandering, waiting, waiting, and then finally he walked for hours home, and his father asked him what happened to the, to your, to the bike. He said, inshallah, it was stolen. So, <laughs> 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 he 
said, every, from that point on, everything is inshallah. And Amr is a Saidi. There is a Saidi guy from Egypt, about Egypt. He went from his village to Cairo, and he found that in the, in the Tahrir Square or whatever, a big clock there. And subhanAllah, you, you need a letter to go and say, and he said, that, he said, oh, that's a big one, you know. So watch, it's big, they hang it there, you know. And they said, uh, some thief, he saw him, he said, you know, I can sell you this. This. He said, really? How much? And they said, this amount of money. And they said, okay, stay here. I will bring the leather and I will come back. And he did not come back. He took the money and he left. But this is this not belongs to him. And uh, he went to his village and his cousin he said, how's Egypt? How's Cairo? Egypt. Yeah. I said, Cairo, Egypt. Yeah. How's Masri? Yeah. I said, it's good, but you know, this is what happened to me. The man uh, took my money and the thief. He said, okay, I'm smarter than the people of Egypt. I will go. And he went to the same place, he saw see the watch, and he said, wow, what is good? The thief came uh, to the cousin of the, the first one. And they said, uh, how much? I can't say this to you, I said, how much? This is this amount. He said, okay, give me the money, and they stay here, I will bring the leather, and I will come back. He said, no, take the money, and I'm the one who's gonna bring the leather, and I will come back. <laughs> <laughs> He's making himself smart, yeah. <laughs> Or I will kill you. I'll tell you another halal joke about halal joke about this man. He was married for like 30 years, and he decided he wasn't really saying a kind word to his wife. So he said, "Well, it's about time to make her happy." and say a kind word, you know, so I, hopefully I could have a better uh, atmosphere and minimize, not eliminate, but minimize the argus and fight. Yeah. <laughs> so he went back, she prepared him the food as usual, and uh, and then he went after he ate, enjoyed the food, he looked at her and says, that's one of the best ever food I ever had. Oh, it's beautiful. Sure. I enjoy it. the food, you know, uh, after he ate. And he kept saying, that's nothing, I never ate like that before. Yeah. And he looked at her face and she was angry. She said, what I expect you to, I'm telling you kind words, you know, I expect you to, you know, to, to have it. that and be happy. He said, you know what, uh, I've been cooking for you for 30 years and how about this particular time, he said, that's the best food. Do you know this food, actually I get it from the neighbors. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know that. Oh. So he was lucky. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking when I said that about that guy. Uh, every time his wife she used to bring food and tea and everything, he said, he said, thank you, honey, thank you, my love, thank you, I love you so much. Every time, mashallah, good words. And he said, he finally, I want to go to Hajj. I went to Hajj and he came back. After Hajj, the lady bringing food, no talk. Bring tea, no talk. Fruits, nothing. I was like, what happened to my husband? Before Hajj, he used to tell me, honey, sweet, I love you, do you feel, thank you. Now nothing comes. She said, he said, I make Hajj, I don't want to lie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I have something, but uh, uh, somebody sent me. I like this one. So I, I hope you will. He says he lives with his wife in an ordinary rental apartment in the city of San Francisco. Oh. He never went branded clothing. His glasses are, oh, his watches are functional and unglamorous. He does not have his own car. His primary means of transportation is the bus. And the bag he uses for work is an old plastic bag. But surprisingly, over the course of his life, he has donated more than $8 billion to charitable uh, organ. Oh, wow. Who is this man? Uh, well, his name is Chuck Feeney. Uh, he is uh, frugal with his himself. He likes to make money, but does not like to spend it on himself. SubhanAllah. Uh, through his life, he has contributed $588 million to Cornell University, $125 million to the University of California, 
and 60 million to Stanford University. And he's riding the bus. Outside of the United States, Tourism States he spent $1 billion in Ireland. Subhanallah. Um, <coughs> incredibly, he also founded a charity fund and aimed at providing uh, cleft, uh, something for surgery. More incredible still, Chuck never sought praise for his money. He admirably never revealed his name in association, but asked for his donation to be made anonymously. Toward the end of his life, Chuck Feeney selfless and astounding, uh, it's very fast. When Chuck eventually did face the press, was asked for inevitable, he says, why did you choose to donate all of your wealth to charity? Yes. Uh, Chuck Feeney simply smiled and said, people are born naked and then Finally, die alone. Allah. Is still alive or is And he continued. And he continued. No one carried. No one carried the wealth and reputation that himself. Oh, it's very fast. And reporter asked Chuck, "Everyone's more. Why did you donate all of your fortunes?" Chuck smiled cheerfully and gave an un uh, behind anyone's imagination, because the because the cops. Co oh, it's very fast. Tell me. Anyhow. You'll get the point, yeah, subhanAllah. subhanAllah. Is he still alive? Is this guy or? He's an angel, he's alive. Allah is not able. I don't know. Yeah. He died early. If you're looking for a doctor, I'm going to die early. The good news yesterday, I saw uh, it on YouTube. Uh, the Air, uh, Louisville Airport, they named it after Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I was so happy when I see that yesterday. Where, where is that? He deserved it. Louisville Airport, it's Muhammad Ali Airport now. Really, Allah, it makes me happy. I always love this man so much. Oh, yes. he, he, he works a lot for Islam and he gives good image yes. for Muslims yes. in, in this country. Yes. Around the world, actually. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, it's, it's a good news. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And they, when we see something like that in, in this country, they said America discrimination. There, there is no discrimination in America. His name is Muhammad and Ali. And they named, uh, and Alhamdulillah, this is a good country and beautiful country. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Only the white folks. Alhamdulillah. اللهم عافنا في من عافيت أمين تولنا في من توليت أمين وبارك لنا في ما عطيت وقنا عذاب النار أمين يا رب اللهم لا تجعل مريضا إلا شفيته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة لو كذبتها يا رب يا كريم وارحم الرحمين أمين يا رب الله منصر وعز واحد المسلمين في كل مكان وكل زمان الله مكسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن الإيمان ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا اللهم متعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا أبدا ما أبكتنا واجعل الوارث منا اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ منا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا ولا يسلط علينا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا اللهم تقبل منا صالح الأعمال وخير الدعوات وكن معنا ولا تكن علينا وجعل الجنة هي درنا من غير سبكة عذاب وصلي وسلم وبارك على محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام السلام وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير